Welcome to another Children's Church video. My name is Pastor Connie and this is Pastor Connie's Couch of Creativity. I'm glad that you're here today. So today we're going to be looking at the Gospel of John and John tells a story of when Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. So we're going to be talking about who is this Good Shepherd and what does that mean for us today. Before we begin though, we need to get a few supplies together. As usual, we have our worship bulletins, so make sure you download those and get ready. You can follow the secret code afterwards and play some extra games that have to do with our story from the Gospel of John. And then we have two downloads you can also do. We're going to be making a craft with this little sheep thing, as well as there's this cool thing, My Prayer Space. So if you want to download those and get your crayons out, all you need for today are crayons or markers and then some scissors and glue, and then you'll be ready to go. This week on our Google Classroom, I read a story. This is one of my favorite stories from when I was a little girl. The story talks about Jesus being our good shepherd. So if you haven't watched that after this video, you are welcome to go into our Google Classroom and watch us read with me this really fun story about Blister the Lamb. <laughs> All right, so go get your supplies together and we'll meet back here shortly. So for today, we're gonna to sing a song called Leaning on the Lord's Side. I'm gonna be playing it on my guitar and my assistant Bertha is gonna be showing you the motions. So I'm gonna ask a question and then you have to follow Bertha and see if you can move along. So make sure you're standing up and here's how it goes. Whose side are you leaning on? on dropping on the Lord's side I said whose side are you dropping on dropping on the Lord's side I drop I drop I drop I drop dropping on the Lord's side I drop I drop I drop I drop dropping on the Lord's side whose side are you phoning on
today about sheep. <sighs> Amazing, huh? So if you've downloaded this, you're going to cut it in half. You only need half. But if you have a sister or brother watching along, you're saving paper by only needing half and you can give the other half to your sister or your brother. Now, I'm gonna get rid of that one. I am going to first cut out these for these two squares, but it's kind of a magic trick because when I cut it, I end up with four rectangular pieces, not just two. Because how many legs does a sheep have? Four, you're right. Okay, so we're gonna cut on the line. One, two, three, and look at that. You have four little legs. Oh, and you also need a piece of, you can have, if you have colored paper, that'd be great, but if not, just grab another piece of white paper. And you only need half of it, so I'm gonna fold it in half. And then I'm gonna cut along the fold. I just want a cute little picture of a lamb. I don't need a giant piece of paper. Okay. Now I have my four little pieces and I'm gonna get out my markers. And I'm going to paint or color them black. I'm gonna put them on my little pa my paper plate here so that I don't make a mess. You can also use crayons or even an ink pen if you want to. Now I have my four legs. And now I'm going to put my legs on my paper like this. We have two legs in the front and two legs in the back. And I'm gonna get my glue. I'm going to glue it down. Now, I have four little legs. Here's what I want you to do next. Get some white paint and pour a little bit of white paint onto your paper plate. You don't need a lot. Now you're gonna take your magic finger and you're gonna make fingerprints and that's gonna be the wool of your sheep. All right, I think I'm about done with my, my sheep looks kind of like a square sheep. How did yours turn out? So now we're gonna let this dry. Pretend like it dried. Now, we have this left. So I'm going to cut out my sheep face. My sheep face. But I also want to see their eyes. So I'm going to draw some googly eyes. Ooh, can I have a big googly eye fan? Ooh. See my googly eyes? And now I'm going to do black on their ears and kind of around their face. Around his face. But I'll just leave the rest. All right. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue on him boop, 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 boop. and glue down my face. Look, he's got a little sheepy. Hello, little sheep. And we're almost done. And we're going to cut out our little words here. The words say, the Lord is my shepherd. Today we got to hear a lot of you recite Psalm 23 which is one of the most favorite, um, most popular Psalms in the Bible. And it brings us a lot of comfort to know that Jesus is our shepherd. 
So this says, the Lord is my shepherd. He loves me and he takes good care of me, right? And our memory verse today is going to be from John chapter 10. And it says this, I am the good shepherd. This is Jesus talking. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. We're going to glue that to the top of our picture. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Jesus knows you. He knows me. He knows your mom. He knows your dad. He knows your aunt and uncle. There's our little activity for today. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. So as we practice hearing Jesus's voice, the more and more we listen for his voice and learn what his voice sounds like, the easier it is to know what his voice doesn't sound like. And if you think about like your mom's voice, there are so many women in the world. The best way to know your mom's voice is to get to know your mom's voice so well that you know her voice is not like any of the others. You're very, very familiar with just her voice. So in the field of banking, people that take care of our money in banks, what they do to train their employees is they train their employees to be super familiar with the real thing. The employees know what it feels like, how thick it feels, how firm it feels, how it feels when it's folded, how it smells, how it feels across your fingers, what it looks like, the color, the texture. They get really, really familiar. They get to be experts in the real thing. And then when someone comes in and brings, let's say this Monopoly $20 bill, they know right away it's not the real thing because it doesn't look the same doesn't feel the same, doesn't even smell the same. That doesn't matter what counterfeit or what other money I bring into the bank, they'll know if it's not real or not based on how well they know this original. So we're gonna do an experiment with my three kids. I'm going to lay out these six pieces of paper. We have a dollar bill, and then we have Monopoly money and an Uno card, and then, um, oh, farming game. $10,000 and then a piece of cardstock and a piece of paper. And we're gonna see if they can, with their eyes closed, feel which one is the original dollar bill. And I'm guessing all three of my kids will be able to know because they have felt the real thing enough times they know what the real thing sounds like. Just like when we listen to God enough times, we begin to recognize that voice and we know that it's him. And then when we hear, a sound or a voice that's different, we might not know whose it is or what it is, but we know it's not the voice that we know. And so we know not to listen to that voice. So we're gonna see how well my kids can discern which of these is the real thing. You ready? Okay, so I'm going to now place some objects in front of Anna. She has her eyes closed and she's going to just by feeling them Tell me which one of these is a real dollar and which is not a real dollar. There are a few different options out here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six options. Keep your eyes closed, please. Six options for a real or fake dollar. Tell me which are, which one is the real dollar? You can feel all six. Not that one. That's yes. paper. Oh. Why do you think that? It just feels like paper. It, it's just paper. Okay. It's super smooth. This is cardstock. So also not that one. This is laminated. Dollars aren't. This is paper or uh, Monopoly or something like that. Like this is a potential yes. Is there another one? There's one more. That's too small. <laughs> so what do you have in your hand right here? Uh. I can't tell what, I'm yeah. guessing a bill. <laughs> okay, open your eyes. <laughs> Good job. How did you know that's what it was? Because it felt right. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels right, huh? Because you have felt a dollar bill before? Yes. And you just know what it feels. Good job. You can keep that. Thank you for All playing. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have my daughter, Abigail, who's going to try the same experiment. Let's see how she does. Okay, close your eyes and look this way. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to be putting six different objects in front of you. 
and you're going to just with your your hands only feel which one is the real dollar okay this is not a real dollar this is not a real dollar this feels like it's probably close if it's not the real dollar okay no 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 that's it. So go back. Okay. Which one is it? There's this one. You think of, what, it, what makes you think that's right? It feels the best out of all the other How ones. How would you know? Because I've, you... I've felt a dollar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Open your eyes. Yay! Yay! Good job. You this can is, have that in honor crisp. of helping me. Thank you, Abigail. <laughs> all right. I'm here with Micah now. Micah, I'm going to give you six different something pieces of something and one is a dollar bill the rest are fakes so i need you to close your eyes look that way close your eyes and then i'm going to put six things down and then with your eyes still looking that way or closed i want you to feel and just by touching which one is the real dollar bill okay, okay. so look that way Okay, eyes shut. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and have fun. If you can figure out what they are, it's even, oops, not that one, huh? You can talk aloud. Tell us what you're oh, thinking or I, feeling. Oh, okay. Well, this is uh, not quite as uh, pliable as a normal dollar bill. So, so I was, definitely not a dollar yeah, bill. Yeah, that's not one. That's not. Yeah, this no. is the one you flew across oh. the table. Uh, this feels like. Well, it, it's it's slick in surface, but it's not quite firm enough to be something like a gift card. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna guess it's like one of those weird coupon things that you have sometimes that's pretty firm. Okay. Uh, th this is card stock <laughs> paper. <laughs> okay. um, so that's not a dollar bill either. I'm moving along. Oh, here it is. Here's that. <laughs> awful grainy texture of a dollar bill that I was looking for. I think I can even feel who's on the one, who's on the one? George Washington. Yeah, I think I can even feel uh, Washington's face right now between my Okay, well, let's make sure there. there's two more to try. Okay, okay, we'll leave I'll, I'll leave that over there for now. Um, moving along the line, we got this one, which I think is just kind of like a repeat of number two, if I'm not mistaken. And then the last one, which again just kind of feels like regular old paper. So this, uh, this, this is my vote. Okay, open your eyes. What do you think? You did yeah, it. Baby. Good job. So why do you think you could di distinguish that amongst the other ones? Uh, because of. Have you ever touched a dollar before? I have indeed. Yeah. Are you very familiar with how it feels? Yeah, I've touched quite a few dollars in my life. <laughs> I'm pretty rich. Yeah. Not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, this is my gift to you. Thank you for yes. participating, and good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I expected, all of my kids could feel the original. They knew which of these pieces of paper was the real dollar bill. They know it because they've played with it, they've touched it, they've used it, they've handled it, and they're so familiar with the real thing that they know all those other five options didn't feel right. So as we work on hearing God's voice, the more we practice, the more we listen, the more familiar we become to God's voice. And then the easier it is for us to know when we hear a different thought to know, wait, I don't know who's talking, but that's not the voice that I know. Just like our scripture today, the Lord Jesus says, I know my sheep and my sheep know me, right? So Jesus knows our voices and we need to work on knowing what his voice sounds like. So let's keep practicing and keep getting good at knowing God's voice. And the better we know his voice, the better we can just discard, get rid of all the other things that swirl in our mind or thoughts that bring us down and listen just for the voice that brings us life. So today our story is found in John chapter 10. Remember there's four different gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is the fourth one. And in this chapter, Jesus is talking to his disciples and others listening and talking about 
who the shepherd is. I'm going to read it from John chapter 10. But actually, before I do, remember last week we were talking about looking for Jesus? Remember he met his disciples on the road to Emmaus? Today we're talking about listening for Jesus. So we have two eyes and two ears, so we can listen for Jesus just as much as we can look for Jesus. So let's see if this text, as part of the scripture, has any clues as to how to listen to Jesus. Chapter 10, verse 2, it says, Jesus is speaking, and he says, The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own sheep out, he goes on ahead of them. His sheep follow him because they know his voice. So the first part about listening for Jesus' voice is to know what his voice sounds like. We have to practice listening, which means we have to practice being quiet and opening our ears up and saying, Jesus, what do you have to tell me today? How good are you at recognizing voices? If you were to hear your mom's voice, could you recognize it without seeing her? What about your teacher? Think you would know how your teacher sounds? Well, I have a listening challenge for you. It's called a Disney, Disney listening challenge game. So come on over and I'm gonna challenge how well you can listen to a voice and tell me who you think it is. Just like the sheep recognize their voice of the shepherd, the more they listen for him, I'm going to let you hear five different voices and I'm gonna see if you can recognize this voice. So put your listening ears on and here's our first one. You ready? No, let's do this girl, Doreen. Good little girl, who just like a jaguar, only she was a truck. You know, I used to crash into her just so I could spoke to her. What do you think? I'm going to give you three seconds to guess whose voice was that. Okay, let me show you. No, let's do this girl, Doreen. Good looking girl. Who just like a jaguar. Only she was a truck. You know, I used to crash into her just so I could spoke to her. What are you talking about? I don't know. Hey. Did you get it right? Good job. Okay, our second character, put your listening ears on, sounds like this. Well, oh, all right, let's go. Oh, I almost forgot. To make the clubhouse appear, we get to say the magic words. Ooh, who do you think that is? Three seconds. Three, two, one, let's see. Hey, everybody, it's me, Mickey Mouse. Say, you want to come inside my clubhouse? Well, all right, let's go. Oh, I almost forgot to make the clubhouse appear. We get to say the magic words. How'd you do? Did you guess Mickey Mouse? Okay, here's our third Disney character. Turn your ears on and listen. You know that an enchanted forest is a place of transformation? I have no idea what that means, but I can't wait to see what it's going to do to each one of us. Do you know that voice? I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Let's see. It's okay. Did you know that an enchanted forest is a place of transformation? I have no idea what that means, but I can't wait to see what it's going to do to each one of us. Well, did you guess Olaf? Okay, our fourth Disney character. Turn your listening ears on and see if you can identify the character by the voice. Um, what? I said help me! And wrecking my boat? Not heaven! Fish pee in you! All right, three seconds. Three, two, one. Who is it? Let's find out. Um, what? I said help me. I'm wrecking my boat. Not <laughs> Fish pee in you all day. So. <clears throat> well, did you guess Moana? Okay, here's our last Disney character. 
Turn on your ears and let's see, let's listen for who it is. I shall call him Squishy and he shall be mine and he shall be my Squishy. Come here, Squishy. Come here, little Squishy. Do you know this one? Three, two, one. Let's see if you're right. Hey, little guy. You wanted to go through the trench. I shall call him Squishy and he shall be mine and he shall be my Squishy. Come here, Squishy. Come here, little Squishy. Dory, that's a jellyfish! Bad Squishy. So how well did you do? Did you get that last voice? It's sometimes hard to listen to a voice and to recognize who it is. It takes practice. It takes listening a lot and just sitting in silence to hear that voice, which is sometimes hard to do. So listening to Jesus is sometimes hard. Right now we're in quarantine, so we're sitting with our sisters and our, and our brothers and there's people around everywhere. There's dogs barking, we can't get away. So I think sometimes This is one of your resources on the digital downloads and I'm going to take some bright colored markers and make my sign that says this is my prayer space. So get your markers out and let's color. Okay, now that our sign is ready, let's go put this on our shelter. So when I was little, I had an older brother and a younger sister, and I could never find my own space to be quiet. So I would make forts outside. So I want to show you how I used to make a fort and encourage you to make a fort this week and hang out with God in your fort. It's actually really, really fun. So all that I'm going to use is some chairs from outside. And then I have some towels. If you have beach towels, those are better because they're much longer, but I couldn't reach any of mine. And if you have an old sheet that your mom wouldn't mind you taking outside, that works great for the top. So let's build a fort. Hi, it's much quieter out here. I hope you can have time this week to make a prayer space a place where you can find some quiet and practice hearing God's voice. I'm going to keep going with our story. Remember, we're in John chapter 10. And in verse 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. In verse 14, he says again, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. They know me just as the father knows me. And I know the Father, and I give my life for the sheep. So Jesus is telling us that he is our good shepherd. He is the one who lays down his life to protect us, to defend us, to take care of us. Just like that Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I have nothing I need because God is with me, right? He guides me beside paths of righteousness. He leads me beside still waters restores our soul. A memory verse, remember, is I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. So Jesus is here with us and he wants us to know that he's good and he loves us very much. So one thing we can start doing is practice hearing, using our ears to hear God speak. God speaks in lots of different ways. If you can in your mind, close your eyes and picture an apple. Did you get it? Do you see an apple in your mind? That space in your mind is where God speaks to you. He puts pictures there and ideas there and words there and thoughts there and feelings there. So what we're going to do is we are, and also God speaks to us through reading our Bible, 
but also through one another. So there's lots of different ways that we hear God's voice, but we're gonna practice listening to that space in our mind. So we're gonna get really quiet. We're out here in the yard where there's not all the video games and the phone calls and the dogs, and we're gonna get quiet in our secret place of prayer. And we're gonna ask Jesus to speak to us. Okay, so let's close our eyes and let's get quiet. Jesus, what would you speak to us today? Well, did you hear anything? Did you see anything? Did you feel anything? I hope this week you can make a fort like this and sit and be quiet because you really can hear God speak and you really can feel his arms around you so that you know you're not alone. You don't need to be afraid. I know when I had my eyes closed, the, the words that I kind of saw was this, the words of I love you. That's one thing the Father loves to speak to his kids. The Good Shepherd loves to speak to us, that he loves us. I hope you practice listening this week, getting in a quiet space, and asking Jesus, what do you want me to know today? And then listen and see what he says back. Because a relationship is about communication, not just telling him what we want, but also listening, hearing him speak. So let's trust our Good Shepherd this week and know that He is, Jesus is our Good Shepherd. And he knows us and we know Him. Amen. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. I hope you had fun this morning and I'll see you next week.